In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to make a detailed low poly face inside of Blender. So you can actually make some cool, interesting characters for your game. And by the way, if you wanna learn a bunch about making low poly characters out of Blender, first description if you wanna check out my low poly character goals. But let's gather some reference. Face, reference, reference, image. I can't spell. Okay, so they have a lot of different like interesting faces, but basically we just need something that will vaguely help us guard about what we want. This is even in front view, doesn't even matter too much. Uh, I'm just going to save this and let's hop into Blender. And let's hop into Blender. So I'm going to select everything. A. Actually, we can save the default cube for once. Let's just select the slot, delete it, the camera, delete it. And I'm just going to go uh, actually add my image. So Shift A, image, reference. And I can go to my downloads and grab it over here. Cool. It's in the center. So what I'm going to actually do is just push it back. So just G, Y, just so. Like in front of you, it won't matter how far back it is. You just want to have it like interfering with our model. Then I can go to the reference image tab, opacity, drag it to like 0.3, I guess. And then, yeah, we can go line it up. So it's like basically in the center. We're not going to be using this for that much proportions, but getting the heart of like different like reference points of the character is pretty useful. So let's take this model. We can go take this piece, go control and one. And what we do with control one is it adds a subdivision surface modifier over here. You can see modifier subdivision surface levels one. Then we can take this and go click apply. And now we just have a subdivider cube. Now this is what we're going to use as the base for our head. So I'm just going to go G and Z to bring it up slightly, scale it up. And then I'm going to actually mirror this. So go Z Y frame and we can select the left side X vertices, go add a modifier mirror. Okay. Now we have it mirrored across. I can go clipping to turn on clipping. You see that? So now the center doesn't like pop away uh, like this. Cool. Now, what I usually do from the side view, I'll take the back like this, go G, Y, bring it back a little bit. Take the front G, Y, push it up like a bit. Make it a little bit more square. So you see, I'm just kind of like flat these pieces. And you see kind of the, all these pieces, like these ones you see here, kind of pushes out further. Um, so I'm basically just pushing these up so that the angles of these are a bit more like closer together, you see? And then same thing from front view, like this kind of gives us a bit of a weird shape, but if I push this in, it makes it a bit more normal. Obviously you can adjust how wide that you want that piece. Cool. Um, usually I found that if I push this out too far, it looks weird, even though your head is kind of egg shaped. So it should kind of be more of like a, the back is a bit wider than the front but it looks a bit weird and low poly. So I'll usually kind of do something sort of shaped like this. Um, you see, if you make it too like too wide or too narrow, it just looks weird. From here, you can kind of decide how many edges you want. So if you want more edges, so like this will help us with making ears and stuff like that. So we can take this middle edge and the side edge, go control and B like that. So you see to like there, that's kind of just be good and useful. So I might just pull these out a little bit. So just go G, Y, like there. Just G, uh, G, Y as well. And then same thing here. So front view, you can just take these G, Y, okay. So let's actually get this a little bit more lined. I think it's need to drop down a bit, maybe scale up a little bit. And then this is gonna be for the eyebrow line. So there, so we can kind of get that lined up to wherever we want the top of the eyebrows. And then this will be the eye line. So let's bring it to like there. And then we can take this edge, G, Y, push it back. Okay, you see there, good start for the face. Obviously our character needs a jaw. So we can take these two faces right here and go extrude down. So extrude it down there. And then you see messes up quite a lot. So let's actually start shaping this. Uh, let's go vertex select. And then we can basically just get basically the, the bottom of the chin. And then this will be the jaw. So then we can place it wherever you need. So there. Um, if you make it too far down, obviously that's just gonna make it look like a very square jaw. So it kind of depends on like how sharp of a jawline you want your characters to be. Um, but you see even like from here, from front view, you, you can see the top of my jaw kind of like lines up here. So that's where it kind of like tapers in and then goes up. Um, so you can see here, this character, probably the jaw ends like there. Um, and then if you, again, if you need it to be like very like strong, square face kind of characters, then you make it further out. But then if you bring it in a little bit, and especially if you make this a little bit round, so you can push this edge out that rounds it out a bit, 
it makes it like you can see how much it changes the face you can also make it like if you want the cheeks to be very like brought in so if you can see like the um then you can see that you can add that right there from side view this will need to be pushed back a little bit and then this kind of will it'll kind of blend into like a neck or just make a neck um but you see there cool if I add some detail, we can also go bevel this to add an HN. So control B to bevel. So there. Maybe bring that down again. Uh maybe bring it in slightly. Like that. Cool. And then we are cool. This edge rusher can be basically used as the top of the cheekbone. So we can make it maybe push it further a bit up. See like that. And push it out. And then take this edge and bring it in. Um you kind of have to change like adjust the heart and kind of the relative position to everything else to get it to look decent but you can see if we bring this up now it actually gives us that like cheekbone kind of look obviously adjust it from the front view or the side view as well but yeah looking good uh yeah now we can also go with the nav tool and add in a nose for the nose i'll usually basically just do something like this so we can we have a couple different options we could go just add like that and this is very much like an anime type of nose so you see like there um okay and then what we can also do is again go here we could go just up to like that i don't personally like this version just because it will kind of end in a triangle so you see yeah it kind of gives us this little edge right there um but you see it's kind of a slightly weird shape the other option is basically just taking this and instead of going to there we can just go up to like there i'm just gonna select these faces to take them back to quads just f to uh fill um push this out Actually, that left some vertices, so just X dissolve vertices. Um, so there. Okay. And then from here, you can take this edge, and then we we'll probably need some extra edges around here. So we can go Control R to add an edge right there. Um, I might just go take this bottom and then just delete these like three faces, or just um, I'm just going to take this one X faces. And then if we do that, we can just add an edge loop, and that will help us round out the head. So like there, we can take this, round it out more. And then also from the top, we can take it, round it our head out more. So this one could probably get dropped down a bit. So you see there. Um, and you see that so that is without causing that edge to come all the way around to the chin. Now we can select these two, go J to join. And then if you wanted, we could actually just go, um, we could take this edge and bevel it maybe. So we can take this, go control B, do it like that. And then we can set that up for like the front of the forehead, just to round it out a bit. Cool. And then you can see see how adjusting this position of this piece will kind of change the shape of the forehead. Um, and then you also obviously this is now an end gone with five vertices. Is it five? Yeah. Um, so now we have to decide how we're going to get rid of that. We have a bunch of end gones around here that we have to get rid of, but it's fine. So we could go add an edge loop like this and go J and then again that gives us more like control over the side of the head so and also the back over here it's actually helpful because that's almost as like if we bevel this back edge here uh, and I can just drop this down and make it a bit wider okay and you see here so now we can adjust how this looks with these vertices and then also like how, where the position of these are will kind of drastically affect the look of the top of the head Cool. Now we have to get rid of this edge. So what I could do is just add an edge loop like this and then just join it in like there. Uh, and that should be fine. Cool. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go Alt and left click uh, over here and edge select and fill it in. And then what I'll usually do to kind of merge this into a neck is take these uh, faces. So all get go all the way around. Uh, go inset and then go b for boundaries you see it doesn't it doesn't inset from the center and then this is our edge set up to uh make the next so i'm going to go x faces now these ones are going to go out like that and then join in like some faces and then the rest of them can just be how many vertices we're going to need for the neck so i'm going to take this so you see we need uh like one two three vertices so we can just go match it up so extrude out extrude out extrude out so you see there so now we've got like this edge and we can just select this one f to fill there cool and then we can go take these three edges uh, and then just basically smooth it out a little bit 
because obviously we've made like a harsh edge. This looks weird. Uh, same thing over here. We can just take this and you see, push it back, smooth it out a little bit, looks a bit better. Uh, also, I think the jaw needs to be a bit for further forward. Uh, and then also this is a bit of a weird shape in terms of like, you can see like, the side of the jaw doesn't change in terms of the heart. It's more like you can have some slight curves, like I have a bit of a weird slight curve you see there. Um, but it's not that common and it's not that uh, exaggerated. So yeah, so there, and then you have to adjust it from the side view because you can adjust it from like, you have to kind of check, but all the different angles of your metals, models. But yeah, cool. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, last thing, we have one, uh, like, we have one end gone right here. You could use this to kind of generate a, a mouth from here if you needed. So whatever, you could do something like there. Uh, it's a triangle, but oh well. Um, but you can see like this if you wanted. So you can just get like extra bit of detail. That would actually give us some extra like cheek detail if you wanted. Um, you can also do it the opposite way. We take this out like that, J, and then fill that in. Uh, kind of just see how the, the vertices look. But yeah, just get rid of that end gone somehow. Cool. And we could actually just do it like that if we didn't want to have the triangles. Yeah, okay. And then you can see here with this piece right here, if we go edge select, alt left click, then we have this ready to be extruded out for a neck. And then, uh, yep. So I can select this and go, uh, you have to install loop tools, but right click loop tools circle. Uh, and then clipping so is on, so just push that out and then just go get that set up for the neck to join in. Well, this is the neck, but like to join the rest of the body. So do that and then just kind of like try to smooth it out between the two. Uh, cool. And then same thing here. So there. Okay, so it looks good. And then it's obviously just blend it out and make it look quite nice. But yeah, that's ready to go. This, I think, needs to go further in. So we can select these. Uh, I think I'm on the wrong thing. So I'm going to change this to select box, which is the default. And then push this in. Uh, you can also kind of like maybe bring this edge up a bit. So you see there. So like this edge should probably be something more like that. Uh, yep. You can also, something I like doing is using the sculpting tools. So just go sculpt mode. And just grab actually this this will look completely different in the, the new version. I don't know, I've got the new version of my MacBook, but oh well. Um you can see here we can just use this sculpt brush to go and change the position of different things. Um so F for radius, shift F for strength. Uh and you can use this to quickly go and change some portions. You could also use the uh proportional editing tool like this if you needed. But yeah. So I've messed it up slightly, but Oh, well. I should probably have something more like there and then alt left click and then extrude out like there. That's better. Cool. And then scale Y. And that's a bit of a better transition. Yeah. Cool. And then you can see, so just make sure that you check all the angles because um, obviously like you can mess up from it might look good from front view might look awful from side view so check all the different angles to see if it all looks good and then obviously you can change all the portions as we go along you should have a decent amount of detail i think the face is a little bit too short so i'm just going to go select this maybe bring that in a little bit that helps a little bit uh but then just take the whole front of the face uh so we can just go like that uh portrait editing on g y bring it out a little bit because Heads are a little bit longer than you think. Uh, I say that, but I have a quite a round head. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you see that, that helps a little bit. Um, and then uh, sometimes the face can also just look a little bit flat. So you see like there. Um, so it might just need to make it like a little bit more dynamic in how like far everything is. Even if you bring the whole like R in a little bit. I think this also needs to be kind of brought in. Usually your, the bridge you nose is quite narrow. So just bring that in. Uh, and then also sometimes like this needs to kind of like be brought out. Cool. And you can also like dictate the expression of your character just by changing the eyebrow line. Cool. Okay, let's get some ears set up.
What we do, I'm just gonna take these edges, bring it forward a bit, because we kind of just need these like faces right here. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna take these like six right here, these all these three faces, inset, and then we can kind of get this positioned over to where we need. We can just use edge slide to bring it to the heart we need, so like there, and then just kind of merge them around to where we need. Cool. So there. Might be a little bit too high, but if it's too high, then that just means this whole thing needs to kind of be brought down a bit. Um, because usually the um obviously the ear starts just above your your jaw, but in terms of from front view, you can see the ear usually lines up with your like lips, and then the top of your ear lines up with like your eyebrow area. So this should be kind of like there, and then the bottom of the ear should be roughly there. So might be a bit tight, a bit too high, but obviously this will come down a little bit. <laughs> cool. So from there, we can extrude out like that. We can also see if it's in a good position. So there. And then usually what you can do is you can have two options. You can either take this and use this as like the back of the ear. So if we take that, turn off our push editing, like you see there, and then obviously you have to add edges like that. Um, or we can just use this as like maybe the front. So you see like there. I think I actually just liked having it like this. So there. Control R to add an edge loop there. And then bring this up and then so, so there. Bring this up, bring this like down. So there. Okay. And so we're just gonna basically just start getting some sort of rough ear shape. Cool. And then obviously we can we can use sculpt mode. Use that to do it. Also, what can help is just taking this viewport, splitting it in half, and having one be the front view and one be in the side view, just so you know, like when to, you can kind of take these vertices and just push them in. So let's just turn our proportion editing on, G Y or G X. So there. Um, cool. And then this might be a little bit too far back, so just G Y. Usually the ear is rough in the center, so I think it's also just because of how far it goes back, it just looks a bit weird. Cool. I think it's a bit too thick, so I'm just going to grab these edges like this. And then we can just edge slide, just G twice to edge slide. Um, cool. So you see there. Um, you can see here, because we have it kind of like set up like this, if we bring this edge in, it kind of like collapses it down. So I'm just going to select these two edges, J, just so that we can get like that little piece back so we can just keep the shape um or we can even like snap it into uh wait do i have vertex snapping enabled i do not vertex snapping g hold control like that and you can see there that would just give us that little shape we needed um same thing there's there nice and then obviously we could like inset this if we needed more faces so like there uh and then you can like uh also to scale that down um, yep. And then we could also like in the stage where we inset it, like you could bring it to like where some parts kind of push out further, some parts don't, um, etc. But yeah. So there, extrude, scale, bring it in a bit. Um scale mode again. I think it might just be like Uh, I think from the side, we can basically push this out a bit. So there, and then bring this whole middle section in. So, yeah, get a good shape, make sure it looks good. Um, and then, obviously, you can adjust the position of, like, eyes and the facial features, because, like, the ears do change a lot about how the face kind of looks. Um, so make sure to adjust that once adding them in. Um, yeah. But you can see there, if you turn on some viewport shading, doesn't look anything like our reference, but that's fine. It was more just to get like some decent start off proportions. But yeah, you can see there, it looks like when we have a my front view of it but yeah there we go that's how you make a low poly face inside of blender and as i said before if you want to go check it out first in the description to go grab my low poly character course where you can learn all of this in depth yeah hope you see that uh if not you can go click up here to watch another video right now on that youtube link to your like see you